Williams made that one when it mattered. And Baylor only has 17 seconds on the shot clock. They don't have a full shot clock here. Walker, got it! Jada Walker! Jada Walker's been ice cold. She averages seven and a half points per game. She has just been unbelievable and in this game. 21 of her 23 have come in this second half. Three-point Baylor lead. Dispossessed. The Bears defense comes up clutch. One minute remaining One minute. in regulation. That Baylor takes another timeout. Nikki Collin with her team leading by three with the ball. And Nikki Collins showing how much she values this possession here. Calling a timeout, wants to set something up for her team, and still wants to have those two timeouts as we're under a minute so she can use them if she needs to advance the ball. But real, you can tell, if you call a timeout here, you think, you value the importance of this possession knowing you need to get a bucket right now. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the NCAA Women's Championship second round continues. You don't want to miss it. Syracuse and UConn tips things off at six, and then it's Caitlin Clark at eight. Kansas and USC is the nightcap, all on ESPN. What a weekend it has been. So much star power in this first round. Oh, hello, DeAsia Fair. Scored the most of any of those superstars, was unbelievable versus Arizona, but Tomorrow, the stars are out. Just keep your TV on ESPN. Beckers, Clark, Watkins, Fair, some of the biggest stars in the sports world right now. Jada Walker, certainly the star tonight for Baylor. 23 points to her name, one shy of her career high. Make someone else beat you besides Jada Walker. She is playing the game of her life. You've got to get the ball out of her hands. Back in her home state. The Richmond, Virginia native. Shot clock down to 10. Takes the screen from Blackwell. Crossover, Walker missed it. And Virginia takes Tech smartly, takes a timeout, 38 seconds remaining. And a really good job by Clara Strack. Hold that ball. If she dribbles the ball, then they don't get to advance the ball on that timeout. So you have to make sure if you, if you make a move, if you dribble, then you wouldn't be able to advance it. Smart by Claire Strike just to hold that thing and call timeout. Now, if you're a Virginia Tech fan or a Baylor fan, your heart is in your stomach. But for the neutral, you could not ask for a better <laughs> second round matchup to send the team to the Sweet 16. It has been close throughout. Not much to separate these two teams. The one thing you can say is Baylor has led for most of this game. We've been tied 10 times. Virginia Tech has only led for 17 seconds. Baylor's led for more than 30 minutes. And here's the key on this possession for Virginia Tech. You do not need well, a three. Just adjust the 39.3 when the timeout was granted. Shot clock is at 29 seconds adding a little more time on the clock, but you don't need a three here. There's plenty of time left in this basketball game. You need a bucket, but you do not need a three. Best shot available. If you're Virginia Tech, I think you'd love to get Clara Strack a touch. The Hokies only shooting eight of 27 for three. Amor. Give it go with Strack. Amor goes up with it, can't hit it, Strack the rebound. Freshman goes up with it and cashes in. One point game, 20 seconds remaining. Timeout Baylor, Liz Kitley, we feel you. I think Liz Kitley just got mean. Timeout Baylor. What a play by Clara Strack. I said to get her a touch, they got her a touch on the offensive rebound. She's attacking the glass, gets the ball right off the rim. Georgia Amor leaves it short. Look at Strap. Going to grab that ball, being strong with it. And then what a shot by the freshman, 
Liz Kitley, three-time All-American, has been pushing Clara Strack all year. Strack has had one year with Kitley to learn behind her, to learn behind one of the best to ever do it, and she's showing her potential. 20 seconds left, and Virginia Tech will have to commit three fouls to put Baylor on the line. You only shoot two once the opposing team has committed five fouls in a quarter. So you can afford to be very aggressive going for this ball, but you don't want too much time to run off the clock. Right. Andrews, the inbounder, gets it to Walker. Walker fouled, and it goes in! Shayna wow. Walker! Wow. A career high 25 points for the junior from Richmond, Virginia. And this is so smart by Baylor to get Jada Walker going to the basket. They had cleared out this side of the floor. They just had the inbounder and two Baylor players here. And they clear out the side of the floor. Fouls under review for potential upgrade. They get Jada Walker. They're, they're looking to see if they need to upgrade this to an intentional foul. But they get Jada Walker going to the rim. A chance to make it a two-possession game for Jada Walker, and that's before they potentially upgrade this. Let's bring in our rules analyst, Lisa Mattingly, 18-time Final Four official and Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Lisa, what do you see here? Oh, Jay, I need to see that play again. Here we go. I believe that is an intentional foul. That's not a play on the ball. It's unnecessary contact, wrapping her around the waist. I believe this is an intentional foul, not a play on the ball. So because Kayla King puts those two hands yep. on her waist, clearly not going for the ball, according to Lisa Mattingly, she believes the officials should upgrade this to an intentional foul. And I see what Lisa's saying there. She was not going for the ball. It, it, she was trying to foul her, we know that. And in that position, in that situation, Kayla King just has to let her go. Jada Walker beat you, you let her get to the rim, make that layup, you live to fight another day, and don't give her a chance to make this a four-point game. But again, that play is about the execution from Baylor. And that is such a good play call by Nikki Collin and her staff. And of course, Jada Walker making it happen. But you know the other team has to foul, so you get your quickest player going to the rim. It's brilliant. The officiating crew is taking their time to discuss this. Personal foul has been confirmed. Player will resume with free throws Baylor. So a personal foul is confirmed. They disagree with Lisa Mattingly, our rules expert. I, I understood what Lisa was saying, but the officials have a different opinion. So now Jada Walker goes to the line for the one free throw with a chance to make it a two possession game. And that is critical with just 19 seconds left of this fourth quarter. And Baylor has struggled from the free throw line. The Bears just 13 of 22 tonight. And you're shooting into the castle guard. Ice in her veins. Jada Walker has been absolutely ice cold this evening here in her home state. She has come to play. 24 points in this second half. She only had two at the end of the first half. And Jada Walker is our Capital One rewarding performance. How good has she been? She has been phenomenal. She's playing the game of her life here for Baylor in front of a good amount of family and friends. And the second half, her pull-up game, she's been able to get to the rim, but she's been so good 
in the mid-range, it makes her incredibly difficult to guard because you know she can get to the rim and then she can pull up as well. Virginia Tech's had no answer for Jada Walker. Clutch shot after clutch shot, she is knocked down. 19 seconds left, trailing by four. What do you do here if you're Virginia Tech? Unless you can get a super quick basket, I do think you need a three here, and you go to Georgia Amor. Amor delivers! Georgia Amor buries it, and it's a one-point game. It's March, baby. It is March here in Castle Coliseum. And Georgia Amor, what a tough shot. She absolutely buries it. You want to talk about clutch. Jada Walker, clutch for her team. Georgia Amor, clutch for the Hokies. And now neither team has timeouts left. Virginia Tech going to have to foul here, but they have to be very strategic. You go for the steal first, and then in this huddle, they're talking about not only who do you foul, but who, who needs to commit the foul, because Kayla King does have four fouls. you got to be careful with that. Baylor with the ball. Baylor is setting up in the same set where they only have two people near their basket. Virginia Tech has to protect the rim. Into Walker. And the foul finally comes in. Three seconds run off this clock. So Jada Walker to the line to shoot two. Actually, Virginia Tech, that's only their they've fourth foul. So they've one, got to yep. commit one more. You can't let another three seconds run off this clock. And they still have to be careful about the rim. And if you're Virginia Tech, you want to get this ball into anybody's hands but Jada Walker. She has been. So clutch, you want anyone else shooting free throws. Andrews into Walker. She scoots away, killing a ton of clock here. Nobody can get a touch on Walker. Finally, one comes in on King. But seven seconds come off this clock. Less than six seconds remaining. And Jada Walker now will go to the line to shoot two, where she is seven of eight. And Virginia Tech, no timeout, so you cannot advance the ball. And Kayla King is fouled out. That was really smart by Baylor. I don't know why Virginia Tech switched the screen. They switched from Amor to Sumiel, so Sumiel was on Walker, and Sumiel was just not quick enough to catch Walker. Seven of eight tonight. Walker has been the hero for Baylor. Can she make it a three-point lead? She has been so clutch. No timeouts no for time Virginia outs, Tech. That's right. They cannot advance the ball. And Baylor has a three-point lead. Season on the line. Georgia Amor trying to keep the Hokies alive. And a foul called on the floor. Really smart. Baylor had a foul to give. So now less than a second for Virginia Tech to work with. The Hokies don't have a timeout. You need to get the ball in and launch a three. I'm surprised they're not going to look at the clock to see how much time. Yeah, they're going to have to take a look at that. Virginia Tech has a program record 26 game winning streak in Castle Coliseum. Baylor's head coach, Nikki Nick. Collin, has lost her mind over on the Bears' sideline. She's got to be careful. She's upset that the officials are giving Virginia Tech a free timeout here. For Virginia Tech, Jay, I think we all know whose hands they want to get the ball in. And it just depends how much time they add here. 
because I don't see them adding much more, but it's got to be a catch and shoot. And this was so smart by Baylor. Baylor's execution down the stretch has just been perfect. They should add a, a little bit of time on here, but Baylor has done everything right. Yeah, half a second added back. There'll be 1.3 on the clock. Georgia Amore, one of her first nine threes to start this game. She has made her last two. And I don't think you have time to make a pass. This Whoever catches this ball needs to shoot it. To Amor, puts it over her head. No good. Baylor is headed to the Sweet 16. Our final score was Baylor 75 and Virginia 72. The Baylor Bears come into Castle Coliseum. And with no Liz Kinley, the Hokies battled, but it wasn't enough. Baylor headed to their first Sweet 16 since 2021. What a moment for Baylor, for Nikki Collin, her first Sweet 16 with the Baylor Bears. And you can see the celebration, how much it means to this program to get back to that Sweet 16 and to do it here in Castle Coliseum. Jada Walker with the game of her life, 28 points, and Baylor executed so perfectly down the stretch. You hate to see it for these seniors for Virginia Tech, but the team that executed and made plays won the game. What a game, what a finish. Baylor is moving on to the Sweet 16. For Kelly Gramlick and our entire crew, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Blacksburg. Let's get you to Iowa State and Stanford.